This industry is so hot that door-to-door -door salesmen often working for third-party companies are canvassing neighborhoods and those solar panels are going up by the thousands in the Bay Area. They've even knocked on my door and I can tell you firsthand they are aggressive, but their promises are not always kept and with any large purchase, you need to do your homework so that you can avoid a very expensive nightmare. I thought it was the right thing to do for the environment. Michelle Hederlein was looking into getting solar panels when a salesman knocked on her Sarasota door. You know, I have a very large roof. She liked what she heard. Research on the company looked good, so she made the investment. But shortly after the panels went up in December, problems started because... No one had set up the app. I wasn't able to monitor it. I didn't really know how it worked. She says they won't call her back, leaving her on her own. Once the inspector came, they were supposed to come back, and um, they never they never came back. They never called me, and I couldn't get in touch with them anymore. Michelle says her roof was damaged during the installation, and one of her 29 panels is already not working. But even though she has a manufacturer's warranty, she can't find anyone to do the work. I called multiple companies and no one wants to touch a system that they didn't install themselves. She's happy with her $22 a month electric bill, but even if the system is not working properly, she's still stuck with monthly $180 loan payments on the $38,500 purchase for the next 25 years. The demand for solar has skyrocketed here in Florida with the promise of homeowners saving money on their electric bills. That opens the door, literally, when the door-to-door -door salesmen come knocking to sell you solar. Unless it's Girl Scout cookies, take, take a second glance. Heaven Campbell of Solar United Neighbors, a nonprofit solar advocacy group, warns of high-pressure sales tactics by independent contractors. Or make sure that you're, you know, pausing and doing your homework before allowing anybody to, you know, just pressure you into a sale right then. Here are some tips if you're considering solar. First, make sure your house is a good candidate for solar. It's preferred to have a south-facing roof to get the most out of the sun. And be skeptical if the salesman wants you to remove shade-providing trees. Solar proponents say don't do it. Another incentive is federal tax credits, which sound good. But if you normally get a refund, this will not apply to you. It's only for those who owe taxes. And speaking of money, the average cost of solar is around 25 grand. Most solar companies work with third-party lenders that offer lower interest rates. The industry standard is to pay off your loan within 10 years to make it cost effective. But some lenders can spread that out to 25 years, which means you're paying a lot of money in interest. Back at Michelle's. Now you drive up, you see those panels. What kind of feeling does it make you, you know, have? I love it and I hate it. Most of her panels are working for now, but without the support of an installation company, she worries about the future. I don't know how long they will continue to be working and I'm scared that I'm going to end up with just a bunch of holes in my roof. The company that Michelle contracted with is currently under investigation by the Florida Attorney General's Office. And if you have a complaint about a solar company, you should file a complaint with the AG and with the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulation, which regulates solar installers. Another thing I want to make sure you consider here is how this could impact your homeowner's insurance. Some carriers will not cover certain types of solar, particularly large voltage systems. So before you decide to buy solar, you need to check with your insurance broker and make sure it's not going to mess up things there. Well, let's talk about Michelle for just a moment. What options does she have available to her? Well, you know, when people call me, I try to help them, which is the main reason why I wanted to try to help her here. We were able to connect her with a nonprofit, Solar United Neighbors. You heard them in my story. They're working to find her an affiliated electrician or a solar company that can repair her non-working solar panel that should help her in the short term. Yeah. But this is a long-term problem that people need to consider because businesses don't stay in business forever. All right, some good advice. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Shannon. And if you have a problem that needs solving, you better call Bank and there's the number, 1-855-BANKIN, or you can reach her on Facebook at WFLA Shannon.